Donna Ray is someone else who had to leave her home in the middle of the night. And she told us about her experience in a previous conversation here on CBC News Network. Perhaps you heard it back at the end of November. Well, she was able to return to her home for the first time since then on Friday. So we thought this is the opportune moment to speak with her again. Donna is in Lower Nicola in British Columbia. Thank you for coming back on the, on the network. Donna, it's good to reconnect with you this morning. You're welcome. You sent us some pictures, Donna. Let's look at those together because, as I mentioned, you were able to go back home for the first time on Friday. Let's begin with the exterior. Um, what was the sight that greeted you when you went back? Oh, well, just so much mud, broken down fences. That's, that's the water when I drove out of my driveway. See the broken down fences. Some of the panels have floated away. So, I had to use a shovel to dig up mud. So that is, it was, it's just encased in there, was it? It looks like it's just rock solid there. Yeah, it was. I had to dig out to get the door open. So you walked up to your house and that was the view that greeted you. Just, just tell me about that, for that first moment of, of seeing your property. Oh, it's pretty overwhelming, let me tell you. W wondering how am I going to get in? And the, there was chaos on the porch, so I had to throw it all away. Not just wondering how you would get in, I'm sure also wondering what you would see when you did get inside. So let's let's look inside of those those shots specifically. I think we were looking at your kitchen. What did the inside of your house look like, Donna? Like that, it was all thick mud. And the, when the water came in, it just came up inside the cupboards. And that's inside my oven. That's the floor. And it's, uh, that's the kitchen floor that used to look really pretty. <laughs> I bet it did. And all your, your belongings, pots and pans and those things. The belongings themselves, Dan, uh, Donna, are they, all, are they all to be scrapped? I mean, were you able to save anything that was valuable particularly to you? I took some pictures off my wall because uh, they were important to me, but um, they're a bit warped from the humidity. So I'm hoping that they can be saved. As far as uh, furnishings, nothing will be able to be saved. They were inside in the water and for too long. So that will have to so go. All of that, it will all have to go to the dump. And are you in charge of doing that? I mean, will someone help you pull it out? Or are we just even wondering about the logistics of all of this? Oh, there is help available. Okay. Uh, when I went on Friday, it was just my first look to take pictures and uh, tomorrow the assessment the assessment people are coming to have a look and then uh, Wednesday I should have extra bodies coming to help pull some stuff out well I'm thankful for that so pictures for the insurance uh, do you have any any yes. early indication of what the insurance picture might be for you Donna they're currently saying no because I didn't have what's called overland, mm -hmm. but I do have surface water, so it's debatable. So that but could they be... Are at least sending, they are at least sending the restoration company to make an assessment and a report. Okay. And then I was just reporting on how there's going to be an expansion of some of the provincial relief. Is that something that might be of help to you? Yes, if insurance doesn't cover me then I will have to apply because I don't have enough money to, to rehabilitate the house. And for the long term, will you be able to go back to the house? Will it be livable ultimately for you? It's hard to say because it's going to be a good several months before it can be repaired, if at all. Because uh, when I went in there that day, I noticed parts of the floor are soft and springy. So, the whole so it's so it's a whole major thing. The whole have to, the house will have to be gutted, and hopefully it will be something yep. that they can salvage. So in the meantime, Donna, I mean, where are you? Where are you staying? And how? What do you? How are you fixed for clothing and food and things of that important nature? Some people that I know who live just outside of Merritt phoned me the first morning and invited me to come to their house. So that's where I am, and. 
a couple of women in the area brought me some shirts to wear and a couple of pair of pants to wear. And I went to the ESS in Logan Lake and I found a warm coat that was donated. And is there any other help? I know the Red Cross is active in the area offering some relief. Is there anyone else who might come to your assistance and, and so many others in this dire circumstance as yours is? The Samaritan's Purse mm -hmm. is a nonprofit organization, is set up in Merritt also, and they are organizing volunteers to come and help clean up for people. So that's on my list of things to do to, later today, to go see them. You know, uh, you were probably listening to Georgie Smythe's report on, on Merritt and how terrible the circumstances are for people like yourself, but how the community is helping. So with that Samaritan's Purse and the Red Cross and people coming to, to help you hopefully remove some of the things from your home, I mean, how do you feel about the community coming together to, to help you out? Oh, the, the people who live here are pretty good. The, mm -hmm. uh, the city hall has been useless, but the individuals are remarkable. In coming to help. help. Coming to help. What could you have, what help could you have received from local officials that would have made a difference to you, do you think, Donna? Well, if they had let us in the very next day, so that we could get things out would have been so helpful. But instead, we were prevented from coming in for 19 days, and so the water and the mud stayed there, um, making matters worse. That's why the floor is soft, why the furniture is still, the water is still climbing up in the soft goods. The but they had barricades up, and they wouldn't let us in. Well, I'm not, I'm not able to speak with authority on behalf of the municipality for sure, but obviously, as we heard from officials, I mean, the safety concerns were so deep and so far-reaching and uh, must have played into the decision-making. So this will be part of the, of the uh, questioning, I'm sure, how the response was handled at that time. But in the meantime, the personal stories of people like yours are what we're focusing on. You told us when you were on the network before how overwhelming this is as someone with some, you know, some anxiety issues, some some issues in your own personal life, and now all of these days later faced with such destruction to what had been your retirement home and your future. Yeah. How are yeah. you doing? We want to just check in on how you're doing. Well, I boosted up my medication a bit so that I'm staying calm, and that's with the doctors okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm okay where I am for a while. The people here have made it clear that I can be with them here for quite a while. And, but I, I'm, I feel angry because of not being allowed to deal with it in a timely manner. Yes. Understandable, Dawn. I am scared about, I am scared about the future because I don't know if I'll have a home. And, We will connect with you again, share your story, and okay. find out how things are going. But I appreciate this update, Donna. And again, thoughts with you and with everyone in Merritt now getting a chance to go home and see the destruction and uh, the very difficult choices ahead. Donna, thank you very much. Again, Donna Ray from Lower Nicola this morning. You're welcome.